Welcome everyone to this week's Changelog. My name is Jacob and I'm joined today by Nick. How's it going today, Nick? Uh, it's going well. It's going well. I'm excited for another Changelog as always. Yes. And for the first thing that we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about uh, agave again. So this is just kind of like a quick uh, info about agave. Um, if you didn't see, we also talked about this last week um, with the Solana Lab Solana validator client repo. Uh, they've basically forked it over to the Anza team because the Anza team is the core protocol developers over at Anza building uh, agave and they've now have it all under the agave repo. So this is kind of just uh, a new new name, new branding, same roughly the same team, same core protocol engineers. Um, this is a different client validator client than Firedancer, but it is just another validator client. Uh, moving on to the next topic of discussion, I wanted to kind of talk about uh, <laughs> increasing block space on Solana. Um, so I'll lay down the groundwork so that people understand the current problem. Uh, so today, what we have is we have a compute cap limit of 48 million. And what that means is every time you make a transaction, whether or not it have a compute unit's usage of 1.4 million or 300 for like a simple transfer, it counts towards this overall cap. And specifically, that cap is per block, for clarification. Yes, per block. Uh, so if you have a lot of transactions, you especially like right now where there's a ton of transactions going on in the network, you could potentially hit the block space cap and your transactions could potentially be dropped. Um, so there's a lot of different discussion going on about uh, how to fix this. One of the things that Tolly is mentioning here is just aggr aggressively increase it and see how it can handle the, the load. Uh, what do you think about this, Nick? I think much like anything in life, there's always caveats. Like you don't get the full picture of, of like all of the, the options that can be pursued. I think potentially increasing the block space, maybe not aggressively to the point of an outage, hopefully not, but definitely increasing block space to some extent I think could be interesting. But I definitely think that there should be things that go on before that, like better optimization of compute usage um, per transaction. So like right now, the default that like if you if you do not manually request a specific compute usage budget for a transaction, you get like what, 250K or, or 1 million? You get like some really, really high amount that most transactions don't use that by default. They have tons of wasted compute unit um, budget. So when all of these transactions go through and they're not using... The, the, the exact or a reasonable amount for their transaction, but they're requesting a higher amount, you get all of this extra basically noise and, and, and wasted um, compute usage budget inside of every single block. So you just get a bunch of wasted block space. So I think if we had a better like sensible default for like an average transaction or even removing the defaults, so you have to like force set one um, to have like a reasonable actual compute usage for your transaction. I think that is like a, a knob that should be tweaked before aggressively increasing block space. But that's kind of like my my thoughts here. Yeah, I completely agree. We definitely need to have better ways of requesting the right com compute. And there also needs to be more information about how to optimize your compute on your specific program. Because oh, yeah. people are just blindly writing code because they don't know what the after effects are. Also, as you said, we get basically free compute. If you have, right now it's a per instruction on a transaction, without using the compute request call, you can get 200K for free of compute units uh, per instruction on a specific transaction. Adds up quick. Yeah. We, we can increase the block space, but if nobody's actually trying to like actively lower the amount of compute units, it's going to be like increasing the number of uh, number of lanes on a highway with cars being free and gas being free, um, it's not going to help. Is what's going to happen. <laughs> like, if, there's a lot of takes and controversial takes on, on that with cars being expensive, but if they're free, I think we can all agree that it's just going to get filled up without any like hesitation. Um, the same thing yeah. is that it should definitely, in my opinion, if we were increased the block space, it should definitely come with the caveat of economic back pressure, so that the users are made uncomfortable forcing the developers to optimize their programs better. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that too. Yeah, so that I, th I think this is a good thought and a good experiment of like, how can we increase block space? 
Um, there's probably a lot of things to go before it, but in the future, maybe this year, um, we pro- we might see this increase, but also we will likely see everything else beforehand. Uh, on the topic of block space, I wanted to quickly jump over to one of the resources of the week. Um, oh yeah, it's the very, sweet guide. Yes. Um, so if you're interested in how to use priority fees on Solana to help get you into that block space, because it's highly contentious right now, there's a guide on Solana.com slash developers guides um, exactly on how to use priority fees. And you can see here, it even goes into like requesting that specific compute limit uh, and how much to request for like a simple transfer. So the simple transfers are 300 compute. That's how much you can, you request. Um, so definitely check out this guide uh, if you're interested to learn more. Um, for commits, what did you see this week? Yeah, there's a couple of interesting ones from this week. Um, there's some focused around getting the Anza client uh, called Agave up to speed with the, the name change and getting all of those sorts of tweaks going in. Um, but there was this one interesting one on tiered storage. And it was actually specifically the commit message or the PR message here the, that talks about the cold account versus state compressed accounts and how that idea going forward is going to be uh, a little bit different from what we've talked about in the past. Um, so just wanted to bring that up. Yes, uh, it's something about state compressed accounts for cold accounts, right? Um, they're they're doing all this work around tiered storage. Uh, I still think this is a agave client specific implementation implementation detail. Um, so it's separate yeah, than like so yeah, it's not required by consensus, but it's an optimization on the validator client. And we love optimizations. Yes. Uh, and moving on to the other resource of the week. We have something from Loris, which is the Create Solana program. Nick, I know that you've been working a lot on the Create Solana D app. Can you explain like a little bit how this resource works and then how it could potentially work with Create Solana D app in the future? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So shout out to Loris um, from Anza, like amazing dev. He built this really interesting tool similar to the vein of Create Solana DAP, which we've talked about a couple of times. You know, you have a single simple CLI that you could run using any uh, Node.js, NPM package, PMPM, Yarn, whatever. You could run this CLI tool to help you generate a program or a front end. This particular one, and you can even uh, see my comment there on the screen, uh, this particular one from Loris is geared towards actually generating the the Rust code and the uh, interfaces and the clients for a Rust program itself. So Create Solana DAP, great for generating a front end with the supported front end frameworks. But Loris's tool, creates, uh, Create Solana Program, does the other side of generates a really composable uh, stack for the Rust on-chain program side. And so in the future, uh, we're looking at ways how we can better integrate both of these together. So for Create Solana DAP specifically, Instead of us doing the current methodology that we're doing for generating the Rust programs, uh, the goal is to be able to use this, which is going to be way more flexible and, and uh, maintained for the Rust side of things. So it'd be really interesting to uh, to combine both of these together. And and all these developer tooling improvements are going on in the ecosystem. It's it's going to be awesome. That'd be really cool. Uh, one thing the to, to I just thought about could this potentially like make it easy for to bring a bunch of like compute unit optimizations to your program too, like including like easy ways Ooh. to log pub keys, um, easy way to basically do the entry point while at the same time keeping the front end connections the same. Is like is that a possibility with this? Yeah, I would think so. I, it would depend on how the Rust code itself actually gets generated and output. Uh, but definitely, that's that's definitely something that we could look into and, and talk with the Anza team about. That'd be really cool. Yeah, that would be really cool to have, especially it like making it easier for people to do compute optimizations is how we're going to win long term. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, and then the other, speaking of long term, <laughs> go go for it, Nick. Uh, yeah, speaking of long term is the Solana program GitHub organization. So you can see Loris and and Hannah there as the people, and this is a newer GitHub organization that Anza team is working on setting up. You can see the Create Solana program listed right there, and some of these uh, very common uh, Solana program library programs, the SPL programs that you know you know and love. You've got the Memo program, Stake program, Address Lookup tables. So basically, what's happening with this repo? is a lot of the SPL programs and how they're maintained, they're currently under the Solana Labs GitHub organization, and Solana Labs has been maintaining them. 
But with this uh, Solana Labs Anza split, and you've got the Fire Dancer team doing all their amazing work, there's more and more organizations that are working together to maintain all of the programs that are so common on, on the Solana blockchain itself. This includes a lot of the programs that are currently enshrined in the protocol itself. Those programs are being migrated to BPF programs, so that way they're not tied with the runtime itself, with the actual validator code. They're just standard programs, like you can see the system program right here. All of these are being moved from, slowly but surely, from enshrined programs that are deployed with the validator versions to just BPF programs. And this uh, Solana program GitHub organization is going to be the home for all of these all of these programs. Yeah, this will be really cool, especially when they do do that move to BPF. Um, oh, yeah. So that like Fire Dancer has had a lot of time spent trying to implement these native programs on Solana. If they're just all BPF in all one single location, uh, we can definitely make it easier overall for new clients to implement these native programs. Absolutely. All right, cool. Moving on to this week's uh, Stack Exchange User Reputation Leagues. Uh, we can see the top people here were John and Whitesill and Breeze Wang for this this week. Um, so if you don't know about Stack Exchange, we, we've said this many times in the uh, change log, uh, it's a place where you can help out new developers learning how to build on Solana, but not only just new developers on their single question, but all future developers looking at that question or Googling that question. Uh, it's so that you don't have to have people going into Discord and accelerating the development lifecycle of all developers in the future. So definitely, if you're if you're interested in helping out, please do. And the simplest way you can help out is just upvote good questions and answers. Like you don't even have to answer qu questions; just upvote good questions and answers, and it helps us out a lot moving forward the space on Stack Exchange. Yeah, if you're like most devs, when you go to Google things on on Google, trying to find some issue, some error you run into, find the solution. A lot of times you'll end up at Stack Exchange. Just just upvote the questions and the answers that you actually got good value from and did help you, and that that helps the whole Stack Exchange ecosystem be even better. Yes. Uh, so that's about it that we have for today on the change log. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you next week. Bye bye. <laughs>